All right, we are on week eight, non-Western philosophy critical summary number one. So this um, lesson was over Hinduism, and I'm going to dig in the first half of Hinduism in uh, this critical summary and finish it off with the reading critical summary. So Hinduism, to begin, let's learn what it is. So this is the Western term for Vedic Indian traditions. Vedas and Upanishads create the multitude of Hinduism. However, these were often read by priests. Despite this, Vedic ideas made their way to the land and the lay population through poems which were often oral. These were often and even considered the most popular form of Hinduism in modern times. So initially we have um, oral traditions that have now turned into um, written traditions for Hinduism. So the Ramana is an epic Sanskrit written by the poet Valmiki and is vital to Hinduism. This name translates to the travels of Rama. And Rama, Rama is part of a story, which is the storytelling of a prince whose wife is abducted by a demon king. Rama goes on a mission to rescue his wife, Siddha, where he kills the demon king. This story helps to express the view of Dharma, which is duty, by finding proclamation in the Vedas and personal belief and personal benefit from following the Vedic ideas for one's own sake. Rama is a popular deity worshipped by Hindus. Rama and the characters in this poem are all vital to the truth of the story. Mahabharata is the second major Sanskrit in Hinduism. This is translating to the great tale of Bharata dynasty, which clocks in at 1.8 million words, making it the longest epic poem in the world. The idea of this epic is found on struggle for the throne, and of which causes the great battle of Kurusheta, which ends in the Pandavas ascending into heaven. Despite the storytelling, there are four goals of life noted in this story, these being prosperity, pleasure, righteousness, and liberation. The Mahabharata is significant because it contains a large amount of Hindu mythology, cosmic stories, etc.